Hey everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salazar. I'm super excited to have you here with The Art of Comics. Today, we're going to talk about Copra. And we're going to talk, this is going to be an interesting episode because I have a lot of mixed feelings about this book. I have complicated feelings about Copra. And this channel is about the art of comics in the broad sense. I want to talk about my favorite stuff. I don't ever want to trash on things. I'm never going to come on here and dog another creator because I know personally how much work it is and how much effort it takes and risk it is to put something out there, to spin your own dime, to create something. I know there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on any kind of creative endeavor. So I'm not here to crap on anybody. I'm never gonna do that. It's not my kind of modus operandi with this channel. It's to talk about the things I love, but I'm also gonna talk about things that maybe I struggle with. Exhibit A, I struggle with this. There's a great, there's a lot of great things. There's some things that I have problems with. We're gonna talk about them. And I'm gonna to try to be as transparent as my own personal feelings and my opinion, right? That's what this is about. Uh, with art and story, those are all very opinion based, okay? So um, I'm gonna talk about Copra. And we're gonna get into it here. A little background on this book. So, um, I'm gonna call him Miquel or Michel. I'm not sure. He's uh, Cuban American. Uh, Michel. I'm gonna call him Michel. Fife. I guess we'll call him Michel. Although I think it might be Miquel, but we'll call him Michel. Let's call him Miquel. I'm changing it. Miquel Fife. Cuban American. Uh, he's 40 right now. He started making this book, Copra, as an indie uh, self-published book, or not self-published, but Burger Street comics small indie press um was making these books for him 2012 so this has been going on for seven years okay then last year it all got republished by image so i want to talk about that because when you look at book one and i've only read book one i'll start off by saying this this is not something that i would get on the shelf um while I think this cover and this back are probably some of the best of his work, I wouldn't look at this and I wouldn't thumb through this and, and pick this up. I wouldn't. So I got this because people are talking about it. This seems to be an important book and for you guys. So this is for the channel. I bought this for you guys. There you go. And if you guys got stuff you want me to look at and read, send it my way, okay? Ventura, California. Comment below. I'll give you my address. Send me your book that you made or whatever. I will review it. I'll talk about it. So I bought this for the channel thinking I want to get up on this. I want to know what's going on. Um, but it wouldn't be something that I'm like, oh, I got to see this because this looks like Suicide Squad. And it is. So so let's just, this conversation is going to meander a little bit, but I think it's an important one. It's about art. It's about commercial art right? What sells, what's big, whatever. What I think is good, what I think is really interesting about Copra is that this book would not be created in another era of comics. This could only be produced and published by a major company, which I'm assigning Im Image as, okay, in today's market. Um, this would not have, Image would not have picked this book up in the 90s, I don't think they would have even picked it up in the 2000s. Um, definitely would not have been picked up by any publisher in the 80s or 70s or any of that kind of stuff. It wouldn't. They would look through this like I would and go, nah, pass. You're almost there. Editors at these major publishing houses, and I'll include things like First Second and all the other ones you know, that go out to Scholastic and stuff like that, they get inundated with submissions by creators who are on the verge, who are almost there but not quite there. An editor would pick this up, look at this and say, it's got some fun things, but it's not there. It's almost there. Or maybe it's not even almost there. Like, there's no way this is, we're publishing it. 
But in today's market, it got published, republished by Image. And there's a couple reasons for that, I think. I'm going to posture a little bit. I don't even know if the editors at Image were like, I love this, I got to have this. It could have been something as simple as, wow, this book is selling really well independently. It's been repackaged and sold out many times by the Burger Street comics. And this guy seems to be hot. We can sell units. Let's let's love him do it, right? And I think that's really what it comes down to is dollars and cents. This is hot. People liked it enough for them to say, we're gonna take a gamble. And maybe for Image, it's not that big of a gamble, right? But we're gonna take a gamble, we're gonna publish it. It's gonna be part of our thing. Um, let's go down and dive into why we think that is, why I think that maybe there's some great things about it and some things that I'm not super sold on to it. Um, let's go in and dive into that kind of uh, hypothesis, right? Because I'm just postulating my thoughts of what I think an editor would look for in today's market and in yesteryear. And also, mind you, my thoughts are all based on Copra Volume 1. So he's on Volume 5 or 6 now. The art and everything could be much better by then and much different. So we're looking at work that was done in 2012. So keep that in mind, you know? I'm not making any indictment or any comments on FIFA's work as of today. I'm just saying, this book, 2012, what do I think of it? And I think there's some great parts into it. Let's go dive into the meat of this book, okay? Let's do it, come on, ba-boom. Okay, everybody, let's break down uh, Copa right now. And uh, I hope you guys listen to this and watch it. Please comment below. I wanna hear what you guys think of this book, why you love it or why you don't. Um, first comment out the gate is, um, I don't, I do like this. I don't love it. I do kind of see a little bit of like Frank Miller kind of influence here. And I think this is kind of fun. So I do like these two images. Um, I'm not a fan of this trade dress. They use like this funky kind of paper that I don't really like. It kind of ripped real easy. And the inside, I don't like this like crappy newsprint. I don't know if it was a cost thing or if Michelle was like, I really want um, to give it this like indie look or this kind of alt look because um, I'm not so I'm not so sold on it, but. That's just like the production kind of deal. Um, again, I think there's some great things, but I think there's just some visually poorly rendered stuff. And to me, um, it's a turnoff for those little moments. And so I don't know if those are deliberate or if those are, you know, are those are deliberate, which we're gonna call their style or what? So let's just go through a little bit of it um, again. This was in 2012, so I'm not bagging on him, you know. I'm not doing none of that. So I'm just breaking it down the way I see it. What do you think? Okay, first thing, I really like this actually. I really like something as simple as the typography. So this is really fun. I do like these little symbols of things, and I like this a lot. So right off the bat, I think this is great. And then I'm like, whoa, now what's going on? I think this is really nice panel. And we're not gonna go panel to panel, but I just wanted to open this up. But then there's just some weird rendering stuff that happens. Uh, he's doing color pencils, which are different and kind of fun. It's kind of also distracting. His coloring is kind of sparse. He's just coloring at certain spots. First thing, this, here's the thing. When I pick this up, and I would imagine if an editor picked this up, let's say Copra had, had no sales. This is a new property and this is just a pitch. And he gives this first 10 pages as the pitch, right? He has no backing, there is no fans, this is all just a straight up pitch. I can't imagine this getting picked up. I can't, no, I could be totally wrong. I can't imagine Boom or IDW or somebody going, oh yeah, this looks like perfect, great, like quality, professional work. It feels very much a derivative fanfic, you know, this is Suicide Squad clearly, 
fan fiction that you would make as a fan, and it feels poorly rendered at times. That's my negatives. The positives, there are these little brilliant moments. He knows comics. He knows the lexicon, the language, the lettering is on point. This stuff is really good. His lettering is great. All this stuff is really good. He knows how to make comics. There's just these funky stuff that I can't, I can't get away from. I don't get it. I don't see it right. Now you can look at something like Jeff Lemire. Where's my Jeff Lemire? Uh, oh, bah, bah, bah. let me look, give me a second. I can't, okay. I don't have it on hand right away, but you look at some, oh wait. Okay, hang on, give me a second. I'm gonna look at Jeff Lemire. And someone might say, oh, well, Jeff Lemire was Vertigo, blah, blah, blah. What year was this? This was in... Where is this damn thing in? Uh, 2013. Okay, it's around the same time. Okay, let's look at it. Okay. I find this incredibly more well rendered. Yeah. There might be some weird stuff, but look at this. This looks like proper, okay? Um, yeah, there's brushwork. Yeah, maybe there's some kind of funkiness at times, but uh, like, you know, certain things. But this feels like, you know, that might be kind of wonky right there. But this feels like, this feels correct. It all has the same style. It all has the same level of art. Each panel looks like it belongs to the next. This book feels like you'll have a, a br brilliant panel and then you'll have something wonky ass next to it or you have um, just a wonky face next to something right or whatever. And I, I have to say that it's gotta be style because you know he knows how to draw. He knows he knows how to do it. Either he's trying to go fast and he doesn't care and he's chalking that up to style or he, you know, or, he, or he's doing it deliberately, or he's not doing it deliberately, he just at sometimes knows what he's doing rendering wise, and sometimes he doesn't. And that I can't, I can't get behind that. He's gotta, he's gotta either decide, he, you don't just turn it off and on, right? So he, these are deliberate choices he's making to like make things look crappy, for the lack of a better word. And I'm gonna try not to say words like good and bad, because they're so subjective, but it's just, there's moments that are poorly rendered. There's great moments like this. This is a cool idea, right? We've seen this before, but it's neat to see this, you know, hand coming out and a gun shooting. That's a cool, this is a cool little thing. The rest of it's kind of wonky looked. I do like the hard lines. I do like the pin work. I like the abstract stuff, but sometimes I feel like it comes at a price of just bad cartooning. Oh man, I hate to say that because I think there's some of it that's just, that's why I have such strong conflicting feelings on this book because I won't get book two. I won't get it. I don't really want to read it. I thought there were some really cool things. I think this is a great action panel, right? But I don't know if I would need to read more of this. I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe in, you know, book five, it's brilliant. Uh, I do think this is fun. Again, his lettering is really on point. I don't care for the color pencils. That's just my personal opinion, you know? Some people don't like Jim Lee, that's fine, whatever. Or Frank Miller, I get that. The other thing is that it it is very fan art story-ish. It's very fan fic -y. I know it's supposed to be, but it feels too close to it, like too much like it. And the weird esoteric strange stuff is hard to follow. So the, the story, the storytelling or the pictures is fine and some of it is brilliant, but the actual like what's going on is sometimes lost. This is really cool, right? I really like when he does these different print deals where he's, he's using different tones and different kind of layers of like printmaking. That I love. I think this is great. I like this stuff. 
you know, this is all very, these pages are all very good, but then you will see like something wonky assed, right? That's just like, what is that? Um, like some of this is just a little too, too much. Um, his, iso his isometric stuff is fine. Um, there's just these moments where it's like, what is, like this here, this is just not, not really that good. It doesn't even look like the same person drew it. Um, so, so there's just these weird moments, but there's these really clever, cool ideas, the, the concepts. Conceptually, he's got some really neat ideas. This is a great cover. This looks like a Frank Miller thing, actually. I mean, I see a lot of Miller in this. Again, love this. This is really nice here, too. This is really good, right? But then there's these other things that just feel like this just wigs me out, right? This just looks, you know, and I'm not saying, I'm not comparing his skill with mine or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just saying like, there's funkiness in the art that takes me out. And I feel the it's uneven. There's moments of brilliance and neat, cool stuff. And then there's these wonky stuff. You're like, wait a minute, what? And I would just feel like, um, if I was a publisher, I wouldn't be able to put this out unless he cleaned that stuff up. But I think because of the history of the book and FIFA's uh, background and base that he had already, they're like, hey, we're just gonna we're gonna we'll reprint your stuff. No skin off our nose. We'll reprint it, and if it's so popular, it'll be even more popular because we're gonna be able to distribute it, you know, through Diamond. I don't know if Burger Comics. Burger Street Comics had Diamond or not, so I can't speak to their distribution. I just know they were published earlier, you know, before. But this kind of stuff, this face, this here, oh my gosh, seriously, this right here? This is like hurting me. This is hurting me. But then this is kind of interesting, right? This like three-dimensional and then a second. So there's like these weird moments where you're like, he's doing this on purpose means something, I'm not really sure. I like it, but I don't really know why, <laughs> you know? Like, why is that more artistic by making the last M two-dimensional? Does it even work, really? Uh, or is it just different, right? Are we just saying, well, it's different? You know, I don't know. Um, this kills me. Um, so there's these moments that just like drive me batty. This is really cool. This is really cool. This is one of my favorite parts. It's really kind of neat idea of slicing up these kind of, you know, mirror planes. Uh, I like all these like cubic, cubist stuff that he does. I think that's a definite strength. This is kind of a weird contraption harness thing. I thought that was kind of interesting and different. Again, I like the printmaking kind of deal. So this stuff is really neat. But then he, he, his figure rendering and his anatomy is just funky. Um, I mean, this is not, you know, I don't know. It, it, it's hard because I'm just saying it doesn't speak to me. And I'm saying that, um, you know, a cartoonist, one of the great things about cartooning is you could make things represent, right? It's all about symbols. Right, and so those little dots symbolize eyes, right? We get that, we understand that. And so I don't mind you breaking things up into parts and kind of like using symbols to represent things. That's what kind of cartooning is and telling a story that way. And really I think the question about it, should this be published? Yeah, people will buy it. It's all about selling books. And so if there's a demand for it, if the, if the market, today's market, says, yeah, this works, then amen. And I'm down with that. So I think that's what it's saying. Because there's no way I think this would be published earlier. Look at this. This is really cool too. I really like this. The Karakataga and then Doom here. This is really great. That's brilliant. And this is cool too. This is a great shot. Even though, you know, this is really poorly kind of like sketched out, I think it totally works. I think this 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 totally works. Um, I love this. I love this here. See, I'm not all about hate. I'm I'm trying to be very even and just 
showing, telling you my conflictions here. Um, so the, the, the action's there, the movement's there. There's just some wonky anatomy and wonky stuff that I feel like maybe uh, will not be here, you know, in today's uh, Copra. Maybe in Copra, today's Copra, it's like brilliant. Um, the story though too is not, I'm not feeling the story so much. So that's a big part of me getting a book or not. You know, this face kills me. Um, although I think this is really neat. I like this a lot, this idea too, the concepts. Um, but the story itself didn't really get me. I really like this weird hashtag thing, monster hashtag demon monster thing. That was kind of cool. And Doctor Strange character, you know, doing again the cubist kind of abstract uh, geometry, which I think is pretty neat. So it's a story of these, you know, these kind of hitmen slash Suicide Squad guys that are being contacted by a big, large black woman. Uh, you know, and she's the leader and she's kind of, they're going after a former member of their team who's kind of gone rogue called the King Egg and um, Vita, Vetus. And, you know, it just, it just feels, it feels so derivative. Um, so that's a big issue too I have. I like this a lot. So I like his, you know, Will Eisner type lettering I think that's that's really fun um, so yeah that's really all I want to say again there's some great moments um, there is some good action in it I just felt the story was a little weak and well the story was weak felt too much like fanny fan fictiony and the art has these moments that are just so wonky it brings me out, but there's some innovative stuff and clearly there's some neat kind of things going on that is very alt, very not Marvel DC. Um, and for that, I think it's cool. And I think that is what it's all about. So I'm, I'm down with that kind of idea. Um, that's Copa in a nutshell. I don't wanna go this too long, but that's my thoughts on this book. Uh, let me know, please let me know what you guys think. And if you do have books you want me to take a look at, um, I'm happy to do so. And if you want to send me some books, that would be even cooler. So um, my address here in Ventura, California, I can give that to you guys and send me what you want me to review. Thanks a lot for checking this out. I'm working on a new book actually um, on my Patreon. So a lot of that stuff is public. So check that out for some free comics as well as some that are not free. And uh, have a great day and talk to you later. Bye, guys.